Sorry, oh. May God not allow them, may them kill you. 70 years old. May God not allow them, may them kill you. Are you were you listening to all those agencies? Some of them you probably didn't know they exist ever. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It's not scrapping any. Do you imagine them? All those boys, they will give them different names. They will continue to act like they are. Nothing really changes, okay? Just so that they will say, oh, we 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 took them. You know, it's like uh, you calling this place uh, the Office of uh, Public Complaint Commission. And inside that Office of the Public Complaint Commission, you now have the finan finance uh, department cleaning departments, um, what else again? The security post, those in charge of security, uh, utility departments, uh, legal departments, and all that within that space, supposedly in this building. So what these rogues have done is that they will just be like, this is a public complaint commission office. You see the departments in charge of cleaning, we think they deserve their own director and building and their own budget. So they will now say the toilet handlers for the public complaint commission agency. Do you understand that now? That's how they create all these funny, funny names. Some of them you don't even know they exist and they put people there, they write them, they put them as directors and they write, I mean, these guys are drawing salaries from Nigeria. Nigeria's wallet, right? It's a scheme, it's a scam. And they just want to act like they are doing so. Oh, look at us. We are doing something to make sure that we cut down, uh, reduce the size of government. It's all lies. So when you turn around and be like, how come after all these things they said they are doing, how come things are still the same? Things, I mean, things are still not changing because they are lying to you. They are. And that is why if there is anything at all, you should not be asking for the removal of the Pnumbu. The removal of a shitty man, or just the removal of APC, or prevention of PDP, or preventing uh, labor. No, 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 no. You have to end the establishment. It is the system that is rigged against you. It doesn't matter who is in charge of it. You get that? So if you're asking them that you are hungry, you are this or that, they will give you something to salivate uh, on, you know, like... Okay, let's see now. Ask them how much are they going to uh, save from it and then they give back. Nothing. Nothing. Rather, they withdraw more money when you are no longer looking at them like that. And then you'll be asking, how come things are not changing? Things won't change. Because the more things change, the more they remain the same. Kalu uh, Okpara, my dear brothers. Uh, brother, how are you? And thank you so much uh, for uh, your super chat, by the way. Uh, you, you know, we appreciate that. Thank you. So all of these are just deceit on his side. Just same way they told you subsidy was gone and they were going to save money from subsidy. But if you ask them, how much money have they saved from subsidy so far? Zilch. Zero. In fact, they have continued to commit themselves to even more subsidy, but this time to their own friends, like the Burundi change, right? Somebody said, when they were going after the, the change, the BDCs, is because they were uh, trying to replace them with their own middlemen for their own round tripping and then give the, you know, give the people the news that make it look like uh, they have just made a reform of the BDC. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You understand? So, yeah, uh, we have seen the Bala Ahmed. Is it, is it Bala, Bala Ahmed, the Usman Abi? What's that woman's name? Who happened to be under, uh, she was with uh, Bokuwari as well, I believe. And that's them telling you that they are cutting down cost of governance, but they are taking uh, these people to Qatar. Qatar, where they told them, don't come. Don't, please don't come. We are not going to be around. Yeah, Tif Numbu insists. I mean, insisted. And in fact, he more or less like bullied them into saying, okay, okay, oh, yeah, come. Now, look at the list of those who are following Tifnumbu to uh, Qatar, right? Uh, to go and discuss how to help you in Nigeria, in Qatar. This is called the Investment Forum. Something they cooked together inside the ass old rock. Now, I don't know how much this is going to cost you, but I promise you it's not going to be anything less than uh, 
at least 500,000 US dollars, which is the money that Cardoso Cardibi would have to produce. Okay. He would have to, 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 to make that available for Tiff Numbu when himself and all these people. But look at the list now. Eh? Sap household, sap this, that. But I uh, guess what? This one is personal assistant, special duties, general duties, photographer, video, videographer, NTA reporter, uh, tech ops, luggage officer. This, that. Then what, what do you have there? The borough, no governor. <laughs> I mean, you remember when Tifnubu said he's, uh, he's uh, putting embargo on foreign travel. No more foreign travel. We have to save money. I mean, these guys just talk like they, they are talking to stupid people, right? That just take whatever they say to them. It's more or less like a do as I say, not as I do. And they are really, really comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at... Uh, for those of you who are thinking that maybe protest uh, is going to get this one said, no, 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 no. To those of you who are thinking revolution could do it, your revolution must be a revolution that uproots all of these criminals, an establishment eh, that will completely be wiped out. So if you wipe the establishment, uh, it's very strong, oh, and it's not, it's not a tea party. All the advantage you have is the number and a well-coordinated uh, uh, sort of a revolution, you would say. But if your revolution is not clear, it's just about getting one person or getting two people, you have no idea those who are still waiting to take over. Those who are waiting to even do you more shaggy than what you have witnessed so far. So, but if you, because it is the establishment, it is that system, it will continue to produce this rogue. And if you continue to follow the same rules as they are setting them, you know what? You're going to be falling victim again and again and again. So if you're going to get yourself involved in any sort of uh, uh, public uh, expression of uh, rejection, expression of uh, unhappiness against this establishment, make it very clear. It is the establishment that has to go. And once it's gone, all these guys will be gone. The Egyptian you see today, you will never see them again. Do you remember this guy? That is your minister of budget in Nigeria today. His name is uh, Abubakar Bagudu. He is the former governor of uh, Kerbi State. He was once a fugitive on the run. And what was his offense, right? This guy was the money bag for Abacha. Now, look at this story, right? Now, Tifnumbu has, uh, if I'm not, you know, not Tifnumbu, uh, Bukwari's government gave him $110 million. What is the story behind that money? This guy, who could have been, you know, any Alimajiri from uh, a Richard Castle, just one backwater rogue who just got in charge, I mean, got closer to another rogue, Abacha. And he became his money bag, like others too. There are many people who were money bags to Abacha. But you know this guy? This guy looted, helped Abacha, eh? loot and transferred over $15 billion of Nigeria's money at the time. Okay, to offshore accounts. Now, he made a mistake. Part of that money actually passed through the American payment system. Okay, so Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, he was he's not a soldier, he's not a soldier, he wasn't an army in the army. No, no, it was just like a money bag, an errand boy from the north that was picked by that kleptomaniac uh, Modros Abacha, right? Now, you know this guy, what he did when Abacha died. Mm -hmm. the American uh, financial system now tracked a certain money that passed uh, through their system to him. So they started looking for him. So he ran back, uh, he ran away, he ran to, to the UK. Finally, America caught him. So Basunjo was like looking for a batch of money at the time. So when America caught up with him in the UK, he now decided to make a deal. And that deal was, I will tell you where the money is. Or for my trial for financial crime for money laundry that america is looking for me the uk is looking for me i would like my case to be transferred to nigeria so that i can go and stand trial in nigeria i want my trial to take place in nigeria not in the us not in the uk surprisingly american uh, justice system granted him his switch that was how he returned back from prison that was how he returned back to nigeria into obason just i mean in 2000 and uh, 2010 or thereabouts finally 
Now, in that 2010, right, uh, this guy just emerged from nowhere and he became a senator. Aye? He just went straight into their politics, used whatever part of the money he was still in control of, and he became a senator. I think he was, a, he was an APC senator. Is he a PC or CPC or who? Help me, please. Those who know Bagudu very well. I don't want to mix these uh, critical parts together. Anyway, he became a senator. Yeah, he was able to buy his way in. Now, he got temporary immunity. By 2015, he became a governor of Caribbean State. He got himself immunity. And he started, uh, started chasing the part of the money which he negotiated as well to say, I will show you where the money is, but you will give me a certain percentage of that money. And that was around $10 million. So eventually he managed to show up to three, I think about $3 billion of Abacha's loot was returned to Nigeria, starting from Obasan just time. So this guy didn't go to jail. He didn't go to court. He didn't go to any trial. He in fact became one of the power brokers from that part of uh, Nigeria. Hmm? So he served as a governor twice. And while he was serving as a governor, depleting the same Caribbean state again, Bokwari's government released that money. $110 million to this thief. He is today the minister of budget in Nigeria. So somebody did this analysis on the, in the cable. They said, if this money was to be used for the, uh, for the people they stole it from, they said it can still drill about 97 boreholes each eh? in the entire 774 local government areas of Nigeria. Each local government will get 97 boreholes. Now, if they use the money to just build blocks of uh, classrooms, right, for, to support education, they said this money will build over 3,300 uh, you know, blocks of classrooms, right? Blocks of four classrooms. It will be like, it's, you know what I mean is that it's like building, you know, four, four blocks. You say this one is like one, two, three, four. You can build that four, 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 and you can build over 3,300 of that. That simply means that uh, you can use that money to build over 13,000 blocks of classrooms. Think of that. Here is another one. They said if they use the money to buy and support the medical uh, institution, the healthcare system in Nigeria, this $110 million will buy 674 CRM X-ray machines at 50 million era each. 674 of this uh, X-ray machine, right? They said if they use the money to, to spend the money on budget, I mean on uh, defense, they said this $110 million will actually acquire eight KF-17 Thunder aircraft at $4.3 billion each. That money will buy eight of them. Now, if they use the money eh, uh, to fund some projects listed under Buari's uh, $29.96 billion uh, loan, Okay, when Bokwari took $29.96 billion loan, they said this money can fund some of the project that Bokwari took loan for. So this is just a kind of textbook uh, description of whenever you hear about billions, it's been st I mean, stolen, millions of dollars, billions of Naira. That is what I'm working on right now in the, you know, right here. Very soon you'll begin to see contents that explains to you what the, I mean, you know, the, uh, what the money they are stealing from you can actually do in the truest, con I mean, you know, context of it. So that whenever you hear about somebody still 180 billion, somebody mismanaged 110 billion, somebody else took 1 trillion and all of that, you need to begin to see beyond that. The shock. Ah, 
one person, waiting one take a, ah. You need to begin to understand the truest context of what is the value of this money. So that you can understand what they have done to you. And if you don't care, take a look at your children. I don't know how young they are or old they are, but listen. Eh? Take a look at your children and imagine what this could have done for them. Save you from that uh, wretchedness brought upon you because you have to save your family from this uh, healthcare issue and all that. But yet, you've got no money. A lot of you have become so poor today because you are trying to send your children to school. You can't. Send them I mean, pay for medical bills. You can't. Meanwhile, a system that is uh, built as, uh, for, for, for human purpose to serve you, where the resources that is meant to actually serve you provide, you know, provide the amenities that really, really helps you end up in the pocket of uh, just few individuals. You need to understand this, and for you to be seeing them and be praying that God should make you like them. If you understand the damages that these guys represent, eh? You won't, you won't actually have the audacity to come and defend them where my ego is. But I'm coming. Toju? Uh, see, uh, Toju, my brother, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, we appreciate your uh, research. It gets better every day. We all appreciate your sacrifices from T. Uh, Toronto. Thank you so much. Uh, there, Toju? Uh, and it's like C uh, dot as well. I'm sorry, T dot, you would say. God bless you, Baba. I appreciate that, okay? And my regards to all our people in uh, Toronto. I think that's how you pronounce it, Toronto. Or uh, I would normally say Toronto, but I think it's pronounced there, Toronto. So thanks so much for your generosity. And uh, yeah, God bless you, Baba. So you're following. Mm? Once you understand these damages... You can sense it from far if they are attempting same on you again. And there's possibility that if all of us actually get to understand, like some of us do, right? We might be saving more than just uh, the lives of those we have here, including the ones that are yet to come, because they are going to come and they're going to end up in that uh, heat. So understanding is what you are kind of learning here, to understand your own role in all of this. For those of you who have been finding excuses for them, you enable us. Sometimes you are actually doing yourselves too, because we are all going to end up as their victims, including the them. So because have you not noticed? The money that is meant to be, I mean, to, uh, the money meant to improve your infrastructures, improve your quality of lives, ended up in their private pockets, right? And then they believe that they are more better than all of us. So they choose the uh, economies that provide such uh, amenities for their own uh, people. They choose them to, to serve them for what they could actually get in their own country. So what, how did they, I mean, what, what, what's the end of that, right? They end up having to fly hours. How was the way just to go and get themselves checked for toothache, for hair pain, I mean, hair infection? Hmm? They have to fly and fly hours. So they are also victims of their own greed and selfishness, but they have a chance of flying somewhere. You don't. You don't. Okay? And that is why if you understand what they are doing to you, the damages they are doing, maybe you can understand me better enough that if you stop them, you are not doing, it, doing that for anybody. You are doing it for yourself. If you stand up to them and say, Enough. No. You are not doing that for anybody. You are not fighting for anybody. You are fighting for yourself because if you don't, it's just a matter of time when all of us will become their big. So all these lies that they are like trying to, the wood they are pulling over you, I mean over your eyes, right? The reason why you would look back in six months time and you are like, but I thought they said, I thought they said that uh, they were doing so, 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 so six months ago. What, what happened to that one? It's because there is they are just telling you what you want to hear. And in this business, eh, they believe that they control, uh, they, con they own the rules, they control the game. So you will lament until the day you actually take that back from them. Like she always say, take it back from them. You need to take back your courage. You need to take back, uh, you know, uh, uh, your humanity, your self-esteem. 
take them back enough that you can say, wait, I deserve better. I, I'll keep reminding you. I deserve better until you actually demand for better or take what is rightfully yours. Hmm? Nobody's going to give it to you. So I was there uh, watching, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, my usual, I was crawling around and I saw this tragedy that happened in Unica. And it was actually the, a story building that collapsed. And somebody, I don't know if it's a story or two. However, uh, the report there was that they have no idea how many people is trapped. Like somebody actually said that, that people are trapped inside that thing, but they have no idea how many are they, and they have no idea how to get them out. Probably they have gotten them out now. So Ludumbo was there, and I think this is what you have to say. Please. Um, get on there. Get on there. Get on there. Even you were there, bar. I think i <laughs> Even now, look at that. Even now, job, even now, job with that. Because all them are going to live in there, In case they say, I'm not going to many people have a rescue governor, one of them are hospital or for them were injury and so on. We are hoping. Now, for them, they look at the trap here. We're now deploying more excavators. A large number of them will be flooding in here now. Maybe I get to the OSC five. I see to Okay, yeah. So I'm going to put them in. Ah, Madam Black. Madam Black. Madam Black, you're born. When I have one, I and I have ordered every excavator I got from Muna Nambra must be here for the minutes now. I got one commissioner for works. Any excavator, every fan on around Anambra, Baba Viva, and all North Rico. Every door, the rescue mission. Although not come when they get trapped, by the grace of God, we'll get to them in the, would be before the end of today. Eh? First thing, Bugodo, I rescue on the Noeba. Up here? Rescue over. I know none the other. The workers of the, uh, the developer, that his own workers were even those doing night shift and so on and so forth, were the ones trapped here. This is, is tragic. It's tragic. But there are a few things I will tell you. Because it's become evident that this is part of the impunity that is going on all over. It's happening all over the country, but also all over the state. And the kind of thing we are determined to stop. 
people buildings, having buildings without approved building plan. Not even there, you know, there is somebody in the Mabro building now where with no approved building plan. How? How? Anyway, that's the governor of Anambra State uh, offering the uh, support of uh, the state government to uh, the supposed uh, victims under the rumble of a collapsed building. It didn't, you know, it didn't forget to uh, blame it on the private developer that uh, building without uh, approved building plan. And that's the governor, that's the government. And it's there say, this is what is going on everywhere. You know, it's typical Nigeria anyway. Well, I was going to uh, take some calls earlier tonight, but I ran into some stormy waters uh, when we when I came in tonight. Surprisingly, my entire uh, you know electricity just uh, tripped off, so I got the light back on, and I had to improvise to get uh, the uh, electricity in. For I mean, sorry, the supply of electricity in tonight it was late. I couldn't get anyone in uh, into the building to help me tonight. So uh, because of this, we are going to finish early tonight. But I'm not done yet. Though. I'm almost done. I'm just saying it to you. We won't take calls uh, tonight, but we will mm, next time. So yes, there is, uh, as they say, there is hunger in the land and people are reacting left, right, and center. There's so much injustice in the land. Uh, people are really, really angry. But what is missing right now is the coordination of that uh, anger, coordinating those energies and then uh, channeling them into the right direction where they should be, uh, where a true uh, change uh, or impact can actually be made, right? I won't drink tea. Don't go anywhere. Just, just remind me of this guy. I live in told you, Copa money. Yo, by Jadin, Coyop, by the Jadin Kelebe. Say, why does I call me? Oh, Lord, you read me by my dad way. As I call me, none in my look at that life, nor by lay you walk and lay your Josie. On a testing da, my luna, but I feel co far on. To recover back power, to recover Jiwag Bay, to recover by Nick and Kebiwa, to come about no Walema, to come about Dajo Kufua, to come about Nello assassinated Padano. Nowa for my two minutes, a lady. Well, I want them by to call you. Well, I won't pity you. I want them to go to the bone as a very bad by. Ha, but about the passport office. The name was a passport to buy me here. Oh, do you my little room? Paul or don't me? A jaw. That's it. Well, lie. Oh, the lady. I've been loo. Tama me kono ba vi sonko. To mi ojo ba e kan le. Oro lò ni o. E bere wo. Wa la ta la. Ko mi ojo ma wo to de le. Olo wo si ma gbe ja wa. Ah. A ti e gwa wa ta le to wo ba ko ta le ran to wu wa. E ro ta wo kan. O bo te ba wa so a ri kan kan. O lò a si wa ju wa la a ri kan kan. E la ri na i na o dro. O no da. Il est venu à la rue, qui est venu à la rue, qui est la rue, qui est venu à 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 I love you, I do that, okay. Well, I love you, I want to say, Job on Tele. 
ngba te si fi de be alala nu mekun nu de iyawo dopin gbogun ta fe la ri e je o fe yin gan ngbe wo le ton kan re bale e si ni go tin de bo wa se yawo yin na so se ba yi ti lo re ti lowo dani ba se joba to fe da luru to fe da gbogbo eru e wo je po e wo je rasi e wo je gari pa lo su ke go ta ni je tere ta ni je sawa olori eja ni sin nu opo le na tin je ba ti won o ti e re ran fi jo e lo mi go ti e ro nje je ejo ejo be ba ro gbogbo kan e ro jo ta pade olon to se da wa wallahi o ti won fa wi e lo juma o fo ba to ni mi se leri la won e de jo tori to lo tori to lo e je e je e gbe e je e ni listen yes e ti e le ti e gbo ta won be ko nu so Ah, oh, somebody go my birthday And will you watch more? I do But oh, to and the but we say, can't see daughter mobile? That go 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 ele to do ti o ku yin ko ba to se da yin e ti fun pe pe nu sare se yin people se le ti ni se le ti ni ah e jo dori do lo eru ti me ko nu in the time of poverty like this the economic principle of yusuf is what everybody should apply in his own lives it shike no this time o economic principle of tifnumbu uh, no solomon but i don't think some of you probably will understand the economy principle of solomon because solomon or oh, yusuf okay sorry prophet yusuf that's it solomon was rich the time where that guy was making that video tearing up and all of that complaining that a bag of cement was 6500 and people are hungry and starving baba that was like about three weeks ago or so, or four weeks ago. It's less than a month old. The Shege has now grown bigger. After that video, they sold a bag of cement in Nigeria for 15,000 Naira. It was going to go to 20,000 Naira. Call you quickly, call them and say, can I give you a rebate on this? Can I give you a waiver on that? Can you please keep the price down? Still, they are still battling with it too. Right now, the bag of cement in Nigeria is over 1,000 Naira. Man, where they cry for 6,5. Man, say, everybody go seek, everybody go seek cry blood though. The way things are going, or share you get. Um, yeah, they are performing different uh, voodoo economics right now, policies here and there. I don't want to bore you with them because I can see through all of it. I don't need to be an economist. Here you get because you can see all the economists now. You see all the economists, all this uh, the phenomenomics. But there's something I have heard, you know, they say economy, economy economics is uh, kind of. A science on its own, and there are those who were kind of taught on how to uh, operate it. Okay, so according to them, they said if inflation is high, it is going to push investors away because the return on investment will be low. But if you now increase the interest rates, that is like you are now aiming at the inflation itself. So tackling it, at, you see, you know, even make any sense to me. But I've seen it everywhere. That's the professional way to explain why Nigeria increased interest rates today to tackle inflation. But what they didn't tell you is this. It may feel they already tried all these ideas. They failed. You cannot raise your interest or interest rates against your inflation. When that inflation, you are raising your Interest rate on is not the food inflation. Magic can't deceive. Magic cough. Don't let anybody use uh, economic uh, bala blue to deceive you. Listen to me very carefully, okay? According to the rest of the normal world, they said when the central bank of a country is to increase uh, their uh, interest rate when inflation is high, it is to discourage lending borrowing okay uh in a way not to but in the long run okay so what that means is that 
uh, all the investors that will buy the government uh, treasury bills or those bonds. Oh, that's the way I'm going to say this without sounding like, say, I read them somewhere. Because I read it somewhere. It took me time to understand it. And even till now, I don't think I probably grasp it, but I just want to explain it to you the way I understood it. So how do I explain it without sounding like I read it somewhere, without using all those buzzwords? Because those buzzwords are sounding like I'd be economist. I don't like it. Anyway, so the bottom line is that they said, if uh, the interest rates, which normally you will say, if you want to go to the bank now and borrow money, and the uh, central bank of the country believes that the inflation in the country is caused by too much money in circulation. So how do you, how do you sort of uh, mop it up? So you can first force uh, the, the banks to keep a large chunk of their money, your money, or the others you're depositing in the bank. They have to give, keep a percentage of that with the central bank of Nigeria. For example, they have increased it to 45% of your money. So now the banks will be there just as buildings, but they won't really have enough money in their vaults. Not having enough money in their vaults to them is like to control the too much money in circulation. By so doing, banks, banks won't be able to fund some uh, uh, loans to some businesses. By so doing, they control the amount of money that goes into that circle. And if bank want to go back and take the loan from the central bank, the central bank will give their own interest at 22.5%. But you see that money that the bank is keeping with the central bank, they want to keep with the central bank to control cash flow. Mm -hmm. That money, uh, the central bank is going to be giving them interest of 15% on it. So banks are being encouraged to pull in their cash into the vault of the central bank. But the inflation that is killing people in Nigeria, the inflation that actually decides all other inflations in Nigeria is food inflation. Insecurity has pushed farmers out of their farms. They can't produce farm. Nigeria is not producing enough food. Not being able to produce uh, enough food means there will be food uh, shortages. Then when you now have a devalued currency that has devalued your currency so bad, so bad that the little imported uh, goods that are going to be the reflection of your exchange rate. When I say imported goods, not just food, though, including your petroleum and all that, right? So when you, uh, oh, like say, I don't they talk, I don't they push them too much now, but the bottom line is this, all right? Any inflation that you want to control, like the rest of the world would do, you must make sure that uh, you control your food. Not being able to afford, because food, there are actually food, but it has gotten to a stage where people cannot afford to buy them anymore. So normally what you do in that regard is to flood the market with government's food, subsidized food. And by so doing, you can maintain, either maintain a a stable price, or even crash the price entirely. And you have nothing to lose as government. It's because it's your people, and you want to make those things available for them, right? Or get rid of the terrorists that have been making life a hell for the farmers. Get rid of them. Get the farmers back into their farms, like somebody said, or many people have said as well, right? Then give it uh, another six, eight months uninterrupted uh, growth, cultivation, and harvest time, and keep that on for the next five years. Then the, the issue of a food shortage is food inflation. And by that, the food inflation itself, food prices, and all that will naturally start coming down and coming down and coming down. And before you know it truly, right, you will begin to have surplus. Surplus that you can, after you have enough to eat, eh, you have enough to, to also export, which will also hand you money as a country. And farmers, that's where farmers will make more money. You grow the food in Nigeria, right? It's cheaper there. And then you let the rest of the world pay the price. That's where you hand your forex, Abi. That's something that is pretty much like off-the-shelf idea. That doesn't require any, any rocket science or any specialty or whatever you. But these guys continue to roll out and roll out the same failed policies of Emefioli. They are pointing fingers and they are telling you, we are working our asses, our butt out. No, they are not. They're wasting your time. By the time you discover it, it will be too late. Here you get now. So yeah, they say they are. I mean, they say they are increasing the interest rate so as to curb inflation. Yet farmers and other are still being kidnapped, beheaded. Okay, 
So you, do you see the conflict there? That's exactly what they are doing. So I will be, I can sit down there and tell you that uh, in another six months, things will go worse and even worse than what you are witnessing right now. And it is going to be so. Why? Because if you want something, if you want a result in six months to be different from what you have now, you must have, begin to, you must have started working the last six months. And then you can sit down and say, give me time in the next six months it to begin to yield. I have seen what these guys are doing. I have seen them before. They never yielded anything. So we told you they are going to yield it now. Eh? They arrested BDC, the Burundi change. And then they came back to say, okay, yeah, we are, we are just reforming them. We are reforming the Burundi change. Now, they, started, they have started issuing them uh, Forex again. I don't even know where they found that. So it's just an announcement. That they, yeah, we are now selling dollars. So they now told all the BDCs that, listen, when the Central Bank of Nigeria gives you dollars, you must sell it. We'll give it to you for 1,310 Naira. They haven't told people what the official exchange rate is, by the way. But they have told all the BDCs and say, listen, we will give you for 1,310 Naira. No, is it 310, I mean, 310 or 304 Naira? Then will you, you will sell it for 1,314 Naira. So you will make 10 Naira on it. That's what you call subsidy. These guys are going to use your forex as a means of subsidy to those who have enough to buy them. And they believe that is how they are going to rescue your Naira. I also read this somewhere where they said, if nobody is going to start aggressive distribution of money to manufacturing companies and businesses. I read a similar thing. In fact, he actually broadcasted something like that in October last year. It was a bit specific. He said 75 businesses, 75 manufacturing businesses in Nigeria will receive over 238 billion naira from his government to help them stay active, stay afloat in this hard time. They don't want them to sack people. But this is the end of February. <laughs> The news I read today was that uh, Tiff Nobu's government is about to start aggressive distribution of uh, the money to these companies. Somebody, but it takes time that, you know, that they have to work out. Uh, it's not easy like that to just make announcements as uh, a shame, but we will say it again in May. Tiff Nobu's government is about to start distributing manufacturing money. You will read it again. Where is the student loan? That's where you will know that. It is either you are mad eh, for believing these rogues or you are actually mad in believing them. It's either of the two. Are they the same? Yeah, they are the same because only a mad person will give an excuse for these rogues and think that your excuse, which is ordinary wish, by the way, then will come to pass because I uh, give them time. Give, give, give them time. My ego give them time. Everything is not complete. Give them time. Give them time. Give them time. The 21st of uh, February was when they told you they were going to launch uh, the student loan. Hello? One true emperor is one uh, very, very persistent guy. If I open the line tonight and one true emperor is one of the callers, he's going to hand it and ask you and say, when is the student loan? It's not mocking you. You are just stupid to believe it. And you are angry that we never believed it. And here you are, you are angry that you believed them. And the only thing you can tell yourself is that let's give them more time. Maybe they are working on it. They are not working on anything. Are you that dull? The student loan issue is going to come up again in 2026. Uh -huh. When they are preparing to repackage you and the rest of that, and the rest of you are going to renew your slave. Uh, your slavery certificate. Have you now? Go get your PVC. Go get your this or that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you, you will be so determined to renew your slavery certificate then. So they will tell you again, student loan, that student loan, you will get it this time. Don't worry. This time around, student loan, you will get it. And the dumbo you will begin to fight your brothers and sisters that 
even if it's only the student loan alone they do, that one is enough to change Nigeria. Ashiri. They will say it to you again, and you are going to come back here and tell me to shut up. Because Steve Numbu has a noisy strategy. He will do the student loan. He will do the state police. He will do blah, 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 blah. You are telling yourselves, you guys have no idea what you are into. Eh? You have no idea. And if you are hoping that if Numbu will just drop dead, huh? you are in for a very rude shock, you. I have told you this before now. I said this years ago. You remember, I've told you this. I said, now only Asarayli will save you from Tifnumbu. And that too mm, is uh, it's not something I want to wish on you because that is where the shitty man comes in. It's okay. When, whatever happened to Tifnumbu, who will come in? That is where shitty man comes in. He will finish you. I promise you. This is, this, I mean, this is a guy who, fell, who thought... It was going to be so, so, so relevant when Tifnubu becomes final, I mean, a final vegetable. But here he is today. That's an errand boy, right? He will deal with you like say nothing. All of now, we they say a lot of things about him. You know, say the same way Tifnubu felt like, I, you know, he doesn't use the uh, social media because you guys are like, you don't, you know. <laughs> so they say Chitima will tell you to rehope. Now renewed hope, you days, which is the renewed Shege Banza. By the time uh, Tifnubu is out of the picture, it will be the shitty man. Baba, Nigerian activated in here. I have no idea what it's going to be like for you. But like I said, horrible people, terrible people like that don't just die. Now you may you find your way out of their contraption, out of uh, their caption, out of uh, everything they have been using to hold all of you down. Now you're supposed to break yourself away from them. But if you they sit down, they say, alone, God, we you will see. You will see in seven days. You will see in one, Baba, eight years. I tell you, eight years. Now so now go face up. The, the Dumbos, the Abobakus, they will believe that. Now them, they... Now them, they make him uh, their leader. Now them, they elect them. They will continue to believe that. The rest of you will continue to think you can stop them. You can take back your country. Papa, if you want to take back your country, you better don't wait till 2026, 2027. Because if you want to, you will do it now. But if you can't do it now, you will wait for that eight years with these rogues. It is called consolidation of power. They've done it many times. If they have to kill you in mass, they will do it. Since Unga, they will, you know, since they thought the Ongas will unite you in all, all the, yeah, the Ongas will unite you for you to probably think straight. But nobody that is hungry thinks straight. You are not you when you are hungry. You know that, Snickers, right? So I just thought I should add that part to it before we leave it tonight. Uh, and I want to say thank you to all of you once again. Okay. We shall fix uh, whatever the error is uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah. Now, we'll see you again as well tomorrow. So if you joined us uh, midway, please remember, you can watch this broadcast from the start again. Or, uh, yes. And if you have been with us uh, all night, please don't leave without uh, your offering. So like the broadcast, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you uh, same time tomorrow. And you can also join me in the afternoon, by the way. I'll do some random uh, uh, phone in uh, shots in the afternoon. So if you're up for it or you see me around, please come around and check and see what we're talking about. I am going to see you some other time. So take it easy and you all have a wonderful evening. Good night. Je